We're proud to announce CISO Stories, a new podcast series in partnership with Cybersecurity Collaborative and Cyber Reason. CISO Stories features the candid perspectives and experiences of frontline senior security executives and dives deep into timely security topics. CISO Stories is hosted by Todd Fitzgerald, VP of Cybersecurity Strategy at Cybersecurity Collaborative, and Sam Curry, Chief Product and Security Officer at Cyber Reason. Listen weekly as they speak with extraordinary CISOs by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash CSP. Welcome back, everyone, to Paul's Security Weekly. Quick announcement. Don't miss any of your favorite Security Weekly content. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe and subscribe to any of our podcast feeds. Uh, Have all the new episodes downloaded right to your phone or device. You can also join our mailing list, Discord server, and follow us on social media and our streaming platforms, all at securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe. This is a technical segment that I'll run through WP scan for those of you out there that want to scan WordPress sites for vulnerabilities. As we all know, WordPress has lots of vulnerabilities, uh, not just in the engine itself, but of course in all of the plugins and uh, configuration in WordPress can also be an issue such as your XML RPC Uh, API endpoints that should not be publicly accessible and things of that nature. So lots of kind of ripe uh, for the picking vulnerabilities in in WordPress. Now, having run WordPress for a long time, I'm always in search of tools that will help me understand just what the state of my current WordPress uh, site is. And also what I want to cover in this segment is not, you know, just the WP scan tool, but some of my, my goals behind using it. And that is to do a very stealthy scan. Uh, in case you don't have some of the abilities that you need in order to remove like restrictions for scanners and things like that. WP scan lets you uh, modify your scan profile to be a little more stealthy so you can get past any filtering or WAFs or any other kind of defensive uh, measures. Not all defensive measures, but some you can kind of get around and avoid being blocked. Um, You know, we host with a WordPress uh, hosting provider for many of our WordPress sites and they by default include some basic security stuff and controls that will you'll get your IP address blacklisted pretty quick if you just do a full on scan of the site. So I started messing with WP scan and came up with some pretty cool I think tips and tricks uh, for running WP scan. Now you can get the notes for this segment. So I list out command by command. Now I tested all of these commands earlier today on a fully up-to-date Ubuntu 20.04 server install that I had running in a virtual machine. So I want to double check that every command, as I almost knocked my coffee over, every command uh, that I ran here actually works in that version of Ubuntu. So this should be pretty universal across multiple Linux distributions. And again, there's a link at the top, a link in the show notes. It's on our GitHub page, github.com forward slash security weekly. There's a repo called the WP scan dash tech segment. And that will get you this document that I'm displaying on the screen right now. And for those listening to the audio only version, if you hit the show notes, you can get a complete tr- uh, transcript rather of all of the commands that I ran to do this segment. Couple of things before we get started with the actual commands. Uh, WP scan is free. You can install it in a number of different ways. I tried using the Docker container. It works okay. Um, what you end up running into, at least what I ran into in the Docker container, is being able to share files, uh, importing and exporting files in and out of that Docker container would require that you map some volumes. And as anyone knows, it's work with Docker, like mapping volumes can be a little tricky uh, and just put some extra road or roadblocks uh, in your process. So I decided to install it natively in my operating system uh, to avoid those issues rather than trying to deal with Docker volumes and mappings and all volume mappings and that uh, stuff. The other thing is, in order for WP scan, uh, it's free, but in order for it to enumerate vulnerabilities, you have to register with their site for an API key. Now, I did that, and they give you a free uh, API key that's good for 30 API calls. And you're like, well, what does that translate to? I, too, had the same question. 30 API calls will probably let you scan most WordPress sites at least once. So every time you scan a WordPress site, 
you're going to use up on average 15 or so. I mean, your mileage is going to vary on average 15 API calls. So every time it encounters a plugin, it might have to do an API call to say, hey, does that plugin with this version have any vulnerabilities? And it's going to eat up your API calls. So you can pay them for a license uh, for WP scan. It's not that expensive. I think I did some of the, the math for it. Um, you get I don't know how many API calls for like 300 bucks a year. It's all listed out on their website. To get started, registering for the free one uh, works just fine. So uh, make sure you go register for your WP Scan account, get your API token. Uh, if you're going to do this, you at least want the free one uh, to be able to enumerate some vulnerabilities uh, in your WordPress site. Again, you're capped at 30 API calls. The important part of that is also per day. So it's 30 calls per day. So if you're running this in the way I've configured this uh, for you in this segment as well is to store the configuration of how you're running WP Scan in a configuration file, in a YAML configuration file. And you could run this on a cron job or you could script this to run every day if you wanted to, export the results, email them off to you, put them on a web server or whatever you want to do with it. So this is kind of the fundamentals you would need if you wanted to run this on a continuous basis every day, for example. You probably at some point want to buy a license. For example, um, uh, I will probably... Uh, try and get justification to purchase a license and set this up so it can scan every single WordPress site uh, you know, that we're responsible for uh, every day. And to do that, you're going to need a lot more than 30 API calls. So jumping right into first the installation, which is pretty easy. Again, you've got lots of options here. It is based on Ruby. So I have an apt install command. Uh, that's the first command that you want to run in this uh, tutorial. And it installs the very basics to install Ruby gems, uh, Ruby uh, development libraries, as well as Python pip, which you'll need. I found another utility that I'll talk about that allows you to convert the JSON results either to a nice, easy screen readable format or into HTML. So in order to run that script, you need uh, Python uh, and specifically it installs with Python pip. So I'll show you how, how to do that as well. So once you run WP scan, you can convert the raw results or JSON results into a more human readable uh, format that I'll show you a screenshot of uh, or export that to HTML. The HTML results are not anything to get too excited about, um, but it does make it nice to have it in a standard format that you could load with a, a web browser, share that with other admins so you know they don't need any special tools to read it other than a web browser. So you install your prerequisites and then you execute the command uh, gem install WP scan. It's as simple as that. Again, there's lots of other ways to do it, including a Docker container. Uh, I found you know these commands get it up and running on a Linux distro without too much headache. Uh, then you want to make sure you update WP scan, uh, update its internal uh, database, and you can do that by running WP scan with the dash dash update flag after it, and that updates your database. The next thing you want to do. Uh, you can string all these commands uh, and uh, parameters, I should say, on the command line. I really like a tool like we talked about a mass before and in this tool, WP scan, it has a lot of different options, right? You got to give it an API key. You might want to change out your user agent. You want to give it different options so it scans it in passive mode to be a little more stealthy. Um, in all those options, like I, I forget like which ones I need to pass to on the command line. So I like to have the YAML file configuration so that I can input those in a file rather than trying to run it as parameters on the command line. So I'm going to switch to the next page uh, in this and take a look at the top here. Those are our options. So the first line of your YAML file, which I should uh, go back to the previous at the very bottom here, you want to put this in your home directory dot wp scan forward slash scan dot yml it's in the documentation for wp scan the files that it will look for the places it will look for specific uh, directories and file names for a configuration file and if it finds that it will use that and i want to say it ignores what you give it on the command line or the command line takes precedence um, but it will read from the options file again it's on the wp scan documentation uh, which was pretty good so the dot WP scan directory gets created because I ran WP scan in my previous step to update the database, which creates that internal directory, which is where it stores its database as well. So I create a new file called in my home directory 
in the directory dot wp scan forward slash scan dot yml is what i'm creating and this is a, a standard yaml uh format and very specific options for wp scan so cli options is the main uh top level configuration uh section and then you're going to give it all of the information you want to be able to uh, scan with your configuration. So the first is your URL. That's your target URL, wherever you're targeting. You're also going to give it your API token. So the free account is limited to 25 API calls per day. Uh, and I have my notes about 12 or 15 or so API calls uh, on average for your WordPress site. And I got that from their documentation as well. Uh, detection mode. I'm putting in passive. There's a couple of different options there. You know, active will more actively scan, but you run the risk of tripping any kind of WAF or protections that the site may have in place if they've got additional, you know, WordFence as a, a plugin to protect their WordPress instance. Uh, it might trigger that. So for you pen testers out there uh, or folks looking to be stealthy, maybe you're doing a bug bounty uh, on a particular organization that may have WordPress. Um, that's a good option to have is flipping the detection mode into passive, the plugin detection mode into passive, and the plugin version detection into passive. So I basically set all of those to passive. There is a dash dash stealthy option, which does, I think, like two out of three of those configuration options. So if you're running WP scan from the WP scan from the command line, and I think the macro is dash dash stealthy, that basically sets some of these to uh, to passive. So uh, I just kind of disregarded that macro and I wanted to make sure that all of my main detection mode, plugin detection mode, and plugin version detection mode was set to passive because it's a lot more stealthy and won't trigger as many bells and alarms and whistles. Uh, I, you could flip those into the more aggressive mode if you wanted to be a little more thorough. In my somewhat limited testing, I found that it did a pretty good job of enumerating vulnerabilities in passive mode. I also set my user agent to a standard, I think this is like Chrome running on Windows user agent. Um, there is an option in WP scan to randomize the user agent. So it's random underscore user underscore agent, set that to true, and it'll choose a random user agent. I didn't go look in the source code and see what the list was of user agents. I set mine to a standard user agent because again, a lot of uh, defensive technologies will take a look at the user agent. And if the user agent says WP scan, well, it's probably going to block your requests. So I set that to a standard Windows. I, I believe this user agent string was Chrome running on Windows from a user agent. Um, the enumeration um, is a specific list of options that, again, is all in the documentation. And the list that I have here basically sets the enumeration to enumerate all of the plugins, all of the users, all of the versions of WordPress. So it tells WP scan to basically enumerate everything. You can change that enumerate string so that it will only enumerate certain things. If you want just users, you tell it enumerate just you for users and it'll just do users. Um, so that long string right there, AP comma AT comma TT, that tells it basically enumerate everything. Uh, in the list. And again, I read that from the documentation and looked at what all those enumerate options were and chose the, the core set uh, that I want to scan for and enumerate. Now, the next two are on your output format. So I'm uh, telling it to output a JSON formatted results file and the output parameter tells it to put it in a file and this will go in your current working directory. It will produce a file called results.json. Uh, so you want all of this in your scan.yml. Uh, and then if we flip to the next section, uh, it will, when you run WP scan, just type WP scan, it'll read from that configuration file and it will go ahead and scan your WordPress site, put the results in that file. Now you can read that file in, in, you know, many different tools and utilities. You could write your own script. I'm sure if you searched on GitHub, you could probably find, uh, even more repositories that have tools uh, for parsing and working with this results files. It's pretty common. I found one called WP scan out parse. This is a Python script that will 
parse these results and output a little better, more human readable kind of format. It gives you kind of a vulnerability scan result. You can see a sample screenshot there. Uh, you know, the version of WordPress is out of date. So it flagged that and it lists all of your plugins as well as your theme and tells you the version, uh, whether the version is out of date and whether that version has known vulnerabilities or potential vulnerabilities and a status. And actually this Python script does a pretty good job of uh, just capturing kind of the summary results from your WP scan. Uh, and so that was just me running uh, Python 3, WP scan out, parse, uh, and giving it the results.json file that I had generated. And it, it, there's more results there, so you can kind of take a look when you run this command for yourself. Uh, the next command that I ran was, uh, again, I'm running, using the Python script WP scan out parse, and I'm telling it to output in the format of HTML, and I am redirecting that to a file called results.html. Again, it's kind of just a flat HTML file format that it puts in there, and so you can use that to email around or share or however you want to uh, work with your results. Now, you can also use the jq command, um, which is a, a query command that will query JSON and allow you to filter, parse, and do all kinds of magic things with a JSON file uh, if you want to start uh, plucking out specific things. So if you just output, you know, cat the results of uh, the JSON to the screen, pipe it to jq dot, that'll give you the entire tree in JSON format of everything that's in that file kind of, you know, formatted not just as one blob, but on separate lines. So you have to install this JQ command uh, separately if it's not installed already. So I just show you some of the uh, things in here that it outputs over to uh, the screen. And then uh, you can query specific trees uh, or sections in that JSON file. So my next command, I put the results, uh, uh, pipe the results uh, of the JSON file to jq.users, and that's just going to give me the users tree uh, inside the, the file structure. So if you're on an assessment, pen test, whatever, and you just want to see if you were able to enumerate any users, you can run this command really quickly, and this will only output a list of potential users or users that WPScan discovered uh, during its scan. So you can see this is some sample results there. Um, and it found those through passive detection. Couple of caveats. Uh, if you do not format your CLI options correctly, it won't give you much in the way of debugging, troubleshooting, logs, output, or error messages. Uh, earlier today, I accidentally had an extra character in front of CLI options. And when I ran WPA, WP scan, it, it didn't output anything into my results file and didn't give me any, really any errors or warnings. So, uh, be very careful when you're constructing your YAML file that you follow the file structure very, very closely. And again, you can tune these options to be more aggressive as well, but it increases your chances of uh, getting your IP blocked, essentially, when you're scanning that uh, those WordPress sites out there. Um, again, all of the information from this technical segment, how to get up and running uh, using WP Scan in this manner, is available on our GitHub site, github.com forward slash security weekly. You can check it out there. Make sure you go read the documentation for WP scan. Um, it's uh, available on GitHub and their website as well. Um, the, you can also look at the GitHub repo for WP scan out dash parse, uh, which is available as free and open source as well. And don't forget to register for your API key. Uh, on the WP Scan site. Again, you get 25 free calls, API calls per day uh, with the free one. So that will conclude the technical segment for tonight and conclude the episode. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. We'll see you next time over and out. <laughs>